So welcome to our technical center in Königsbrunn at Mark Ettlinger. What we want to show you today is a typical recycling application. We just uh, got a typical bottle cap material sent by one of our clients. So the first step is when we receive customer material, we do some pre-analysis with the materials. So we have to find out, of course, the residual moisture and the MFI and the CSC. So here's our equipment for that. And then we take a closer look at the report we always get. We check the report up front to be 100% sure before starting the recycling application to give the customer a feedback on his input material. The material is quite clean. It isn't pre-washed and we want to filter it today. So we will just run it through our recycling line here at the technical center to get rid of all the contamination. The most important fact for recycling material we receive from our customers is that it is dosable to our extruder. So what we can see here is our dosing system that feeds the extruder. In our recycling line here at the technical side, we have a single screw extruder to melt the polymers and to build up the pressure. After the extruder, we have our BRF filter, the basic recycling filter, followed by the EPE500, the watering pelletizing system with a dryer included and a diverter valve. So what you can see is the BRF60. 60. 60 stands for the screen diameter. The BRF60 has a screen diameter of 600 millimeters, which leads us to a filtration surface of 2,800 square centimeters. The second model we have is the BRF50 with a screen diameter of 500 millimeters, which leads us to a filtration surface of 1,800 square centimeters. We achieve production capacities up to three tons per hour, always, of course, depending on the filtration fineness, the viscosity, and the input material. Our filtration fineness starts at 150 microns and we go up to 1,000 microns. Let me just share some of the advantages with you. Our filter brings along. So we have a hydraulic controlled discharge valve, so we don't have this kind of noisy explosion when the discharge valve opens. What you can see here, we have a lot of screws at the door. So when you clean the filter, you don't have some nuts around the filter. So the cleaning is a lot easier. You can see that we have six heating plates around the filter. There's a big advantage with it because if there is a failure in one heating plate, the production can continue and it doesn't have to stop. Like if you have, for example, only one heating band around it, it has an adjustable height, so it fits to any kind of extruder and it's suitable for nearly all kinds of Poly olefins with the typical contaminations we see in post-consumer or post-industrial applications. Taking a closer look at the control panel of our BRF filter. Now we are on the start page. Here you can find the inlet pressure, the outlet pressure and the differential pressure. We also measure the temperature at the inlet, the temperature on the outlet and you can see the set RPM of our wiper. As you can see, the exact position of the wiper is always shown on this page. This is a very special feature because we exactly know the position of the wiper at any time. This helps especially at the startup because when you can set the wiper to the certain horizontal position, it prevents the screen from bending when the melt flows in. On page two, you can make adjustments for the six heating plates. Here, the set temperature for each plate can be defined differently and you can check at which level it is heating up at the moment and by this prevent plates from breaking. On page 3, you can make the settings for the wiping process. We have one option for the wiping at a certain pressure. In the setup here, the wiping process starts at an inlet pressure of 60 bar that is reached for more than 15 seconds. Another setting would be the cleaning after a certain period of time. In this case, every 300 seconds. On the second page, you can also define a continuous rotation of the scraper. This setting here would be one rotation with a speed of 0.5 RPM. 
On page 4 you can find all the alarms from the past. Page 5 gives you the option to save all the details on a USB drive. Page 6 is for the overall settings like language and so on. And on these two buttons you can switch on and off the heating and the filter. After the filtration of the melt you have to decide how you want to produce your pellets. Mark supplies different kinds of pelletizing systems. So we have strand pelletizing system, we have underwater pelletizing system, and what you can see here, watering pelletizing system. This water pelletizing system is the newest product in our lineup, and it's typically suitable for recycling application. It brings along some important benefits. You see here the typical Mark control unit, so it's easily implemented in the overall setup. It's easily fitted to any kind of filter, for example, if you have the ERF filter up front, you would not even need an adapter to put it after the ERF filter. In a pelletizing system, the most important thing is the cutting tool. What you can see here is a knife holder group with a forearm chromium plated rotor and a hardened die plate and the cutting rotor with an automatic adjustment of the knife pressure of the die plate surface. We have a long water bath to prevent agglomerates. So the pellets are cut and then just fall into this water bath and then they are let into the dryer. We have a centrifugal spin dryer with doors for an easy opening and cleaning on both sides. We have a soundproof cyclone and we have a diverter valve for an easy distribution of the pellets. So what you can see here is the total recycling line.